So this is the box as received and first of all you need to open it which is with a flat bladed screwdriver and then lift it up. You might find it quite difficult to get out so you need to prise the edges. Can you prise the edge up there to show you just that? Prize what you need to do carefully because you don't want to damage the box. So there you go, so that's the start. Now what we need to do is to put the operating arm into position and keep it fairly loose so that you can line it up. There we go, so that will still move free of the... that's good. Right, so we're going to now fit the slider which we're going to line up with this piece of plastic here and the end of this catch, like that. So is that lined up there? And then, when that is lined up, a little bit more this way, I think. And then we just put a couple of marks in there with a the pencil. And then we have the marks ready to drill. So then, you're going to carefully drill on that position and go all the way through. Okay, so now using um, the countersunk 5mm screws with the wing nuts on the back and penny washers, we're going to mount the slider plate so that it's held on. So place these through here. And any washes on the back like this. And then just tighten these wing nuts. And give these not too much, you don't have to squash the plastic, but make them fairly firm. You may not need a screwdriver for the other side, but it should be okay. So that's on fairly firmly. So the next part is going to be fitting the main unit there, but before we do that we've got to be moving this backwards and forwards to line it up. So we need now at this stage to take this catch off. So the catch, we've got four screws, we've already taken one out to speed things up a bit, so we've got three left. So that's the catch off. You'll see this moves backwards and forwards on the spring. What we want to make sure, that's a bit tight, is that this mechanism lines up here. Now, we're going to line this edge of the box up with this plastic here, so that that lines up with that. And also, we, this distance here needs to be about 15 millimeters, so you, you can mark that if you wish. But the main point is that this needs to be level with this so that when it moves backwards and forwards it slides freely along. So once you've got it in the right position that you think you've got that lined up then you need to mark again these holes. Now you can then do that with something that will fit through this hole and make a mark in the plastic. A little bit like that you can see the mark. And you need to mark you need to do this in at least these three positions. Those two on the left and the bottom right. You could do that one as well. Make it firm. But you need to mark those positions and then drill them. Okay. So now we'll put the box using the countersunk screw which will fit through there and the flat blade and screwdriver which we might need to push that through so then we'll push that through the hole and as before attach this to that if you put the flat blade and screwdriver in there it'll hold that in position until we can tighten it So at this stage we've only drilled one hole. Let's tighten that up. And 
Now, we just line that up there. So there we go, and that looks perfectly level across there. So now we're making another. We're making sure that we've got a nice mark for the next. We'll put one there. We said we put one there. Right, let's see if we've got those nicely marked. Yes, you can see a mark here, look. So we know we've got to drill there. And we've got other marks over the other side. So we're just going to drill those. You'll notice we've got an additional hole there, but that's because we've been experimenting. So now we've got the main control box mounted in the slider and of course now we need to sort this area out here but the main thing is now that we don't want this to catch so we have a spacer which we fit next here. So we screw this spacer into the existing screw hole like that. So now the door can't go any more than that when it closes. So now going to couple this to here. This goes through here and a washer and a nylock nut goes on here. And it's better if you possibly have two spanners for this. Too tight because you need movement, but it needs to be held firmly. firmly. Get the line. Like that you can see that we're going to do the important part, which is to set up the battery and set the mechanism. So, you need to get your battery. Make sure you've got the terminals in the right way, the red one and the blue one or the black one, whichever you have. And you'll see the red goes to the red. And so it's putting the blue on. So now what we've got to do is to make sure that the mechanism is in a closed position so it can set it up. So we want to make the system think it's dark. So we're going to wrap this round here to make it and it's closing look. So that's now held in the, in the closed position. So that's where we need to tighten this up, which we do with a 13mm spanner, thank you. Two, two tries at first just to see. So we press the reset button. And it's light now, so therefore it's opening. So that works okay. So now, if we, if we, if we set, see what happens when it gets dark. Now it's getting dark. So the door's closed. You can see that it's not fully closed yet, so the adjustment's not quite right. So we just need to loosen this again. Sure that door's where it should be. Try that. Now we'll reset because it's light and it's opening up nicely. So we'll get it to close, start closing by pressing reset, and then if anything was stuck in the door like that, 
the motor's cut out and as you can see the LED is warning you that there's been a fault, something's happened. The LED at the moment is on the printer circuit board, it may be there or it may be mounted underneath. You may be able to see it there, you can see it without the lid there. So when you've cleared the obstruction, just press the reset button as it's light, it goes into the into the mode where it opens again. That's right, and then if it was dark, as you can see, the LED light is now no longer on, the fault's cleared, and the door closes in the normal way. Now we're at the stage of fitting the solar panel because obviously we don't want the battery to go flat over a period of time. So let's open this up. Well, here's one we've mounted earlier, so you can see. We've put ours on a little stand that we made at the side, but you can fit it on the roof up here or wherever is convenient to you. Make sure it sits in the sunlight. And then when you've undone the wire, best to put this somewhere neatly around the edge, like, like that or wherever, to uh, so that nobody trips over it or the chickens don't damage it. So that just plugs into there. So that will then recharge the battery. Um, and you'll have no problems with that. Now, final stage will be putting on the top. So, this is quite straightforward. These screws are easy to do. And what we do is push that, push them on. And then, it, thank you, we have a flat blade screwdriver. You see that these all go in. Now, don't over tighten these. Make sure the screwdriver fits the position here and it's about half a turn and it'll, it'll tighten up. There is a, a, a seal within here as well that uh, makes it waterproof so we'll just tighten these up like that. So that's all there is to it.